In this step, we are going to explore reading input from the rotary encoder using a library called encoder.h. This library helps us understand the signals that come from the pins on the rotary encoder. There are two pins that indicate the position of the encoder, pin 1 and pin 2, and we've set those to pin 2 and 3. This is an important choice because the library, encoder.h, uses interrupt-driven input so it can very quickly watch the pulsing signals that come from these pins. On the Arduino we're using, the Uno, pins 2 and 3 are great choices for interrupt-driven input. The encoder button we've connected to pin 4, and that can be any digital input pin. Here we've declared a variable called myEncoder. The type of the variable, encoder, came from the library that's helping us read. We give it the two pins for rotation position, but we're not giving it the push button pin. That's separate. These variables, previous position and button, are going to help us in a little bit print the minimum amount of information so our screen is not flooded with debug prints. During the setup, we prepare to print serial data to the output for debugging purposes. And we tell the Arduino that the encoder button is an input pin with a high pull-up resistor. The main loop has the following steps. We read the button value with a digital read from the encoder button pin. And if the value is changed, so you see if it's not equal to the previous value. So if the value is 0, then the button has been pushed. And if the value is 1, then the button has been released. And the last thing we do is we update the previous button variable. So the next time through the loop, when we come around, if nothing has changed, if the button hasn't been pushed or released since we last did a printout, then let's not print it again. Otherwise, our debug window would flood with button pushed or button released messages repeatedly. We don't want that because we want to see clearly what's going on. Next, we're going to read the position. This is the magic part. We say myEncoder.read, and what we're saying here is go to this object, myEncoder, and read the value. And the reason the value is ready for us to read is because myEncoder has been doing work all along, listening to the interrupts on these two pins, 2 and 3, and watching an array of pulses coming out of the rotary encoder and calculating the position. And when we say read, we're really seeing the results of work that's been done all along. And what we get is a big number, a long position. And we're interested to see, did the position change since we last looked? And if it has changed, let's print it out. Notice in the serial print, we have to do two prints. We can't do all in one line. In one line, we're printing the text, saying the position is, and in the next one, we're printing LN. So this print says, just print the text, don't go to a new line. And this print says, print the value, position, and go to a new line on the screen. And finally, we update the previous position value so that we won't repeatedly loop around printing the exact same position. Finally, we have a short delay just to make sure we don't get output so fast we can't read it. Alrighty, shall we run this and see what's happening? We're going to go to the serial monitor. And what you can't see is that my hand is reaching over to the rotary encoder, and I'm going to turn it to the right. And as I turn it to the right, you can see this number is getting bigger. When I stop turning it, we don't get values, and that's because every time we loop through, position is equal to previous position, which means don't keep printing it. Let's look at something else interesting going on here. We can see the numbers are increasing as I turn to the right, from 4 to 6 to 14, but notice how they do not perfectly go and hit each number. That's just an aspect of the rotary encoder in this library, and you need to realize when you use it for your program, you can't expect to see every number. What you can expect to see is a generally increasing number. And now when I rotate to the left, we're going to see this number goes back down.
and it can certainly go into the negative. And this is the contract that the encoder library is giving to you. When the knob rotates to the left, the number will generally decrease. When the knob rotates to the right, the number will generally increase. And now, not as exciting, let's try the push button. I pushed it in, I'm holding it in, and we see button pushed. And now I'm letting go, and we see button released. Not as exciting, but still very useful. That's all for this step in reading the rotary encoder.